So at the start of the season, we we did like a game analysis, uh, and then like we came up with a, like two different designs, which would be either extendo or like a pivoting slide. And then we were sort of inspired by FRC and also Kuki Boss last year, and we decided like um, it was something that uh, we kind of wanted to try. Wanna, we wanted to take some risks and also learn a lot. So that's how we came came up with this design, and we thought it would be like a bit easier to get going than like a transfer and like yeah. extend the slides. So we sort of uh, had like a goal to be not like too long, not like hit that 18 by 18 limit. So we wanted to be a bit like uh, shorter or 16 inches right now, but um, we needed that fourth stage because we didn't want the box to, to stick out either in case like we get hit or anything because so it doesn't damage it. Uh, so that's how we came with the fourth stage. So to also to reach like the high sample. Period. So these are printed out of uh, polycarb and the blue is printed out of PLA. We only use polycarb for like the main bearing blocks and the spacers we just use PLA. Um, I think polycarb is like okay for it, but we definitely like would feel safer using like something like uh, maybe SLS or like aluminum because we have had like issues with these snapping. Uh, we, we're currently running two motors on this uh, 1150 RPM. Uh, you can see a gearbox down in here where we gear both of the motors together um, to uh, 1.5 to 1 and then we gear back down through this belt system over there uh, 0 0.66 to 1 so at the end it's 1 to 1 uh, 1150 and then in here we have our pulley system which is 14 millimeters diameter for extension and 42 for retraction uh, it's cascade extension okay, and continuous yeah. retraction yeah so at the beginning of the season we did try like multiple intakes like uh, we saw like a lot of potential in an active intake for like in taking the blocks from the submersible. We also realized that we kind of wanted a claw because like you kind of need it to score a specimen because you need the force downwards. And also it makes depositing samples a lot easier as well because you have a lot more control over it. So <laughs> what we kind of did is we kind of combined the two. So we have this um, boot wheel to intake actively and also this clamp, which like acts as like kind of a claw to keep the block in so we can score specimen. Uh, we, we are using it for sample because it also means that we have like a much firmer grip on the block, it yeah. flies out a lot less than before. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a lot better. Um, yeah, so we've had issues with uh, samples flying out. So to deal with that, we turn the power down um, only when outtaking. Um, and we just tune that value to get it properly um, tuned. Yeah, so we use that um, all throughout the match. This is the, I think, Brushland Labs color sensor. Um, and we use that in autonomous for detecting the block so we can retract and move on to the next um, sequence and also for fail safes and autonomous so in case you miss a block we can retry and we use that in teleop to automatically retract the robot yeah so that's that's a limit switch so we started this season with the limit switch um, but midway through we we wanted a color sensor to detect the color of the sample for autonomous and other reasons mm -hmm. um, so we switched um, purely on the color sensor and we just never took off the limits um so the melanbotic super servo we've been using that um, we've been using that uh, after our first qualifier, and um, it's honestly been it's honestly been really good for us. We at the start we had like it running one to one, and we tested out a bunch of different ratios, and we found out that like a, a two to one ratio is the best for us because it had like both enough torque and enough speed. So this is actually like a Lego caster ball, and then um, we sort of just like put that on because we noticed that the ramp was digging into the ground when we extended far. So we we just carried up this ramp this little extension on the ramp and then we just we just put it on and it's been working ever since so we we use only motor encoders on our um, pivot and extension um but what we do is each time we retract um we'll we'll set the power back a little bit um to make sure that it fully retracts each time um and that just makes sure that make sure that um the encoder never drifts or we don't have any problems with that i guess um our pivot we run it on a motor down here and then we use chain on a three to one ratio so um it the end i think ratio is like 150 to one and um and then i guess it's like there's not much like unique about it i think but we we do have a tensioner down here and uh, to keep it like to reduce the backlash um so we both set it in cad but we also made it adjustable because we knew the chain would like stretch over time so um yeah that is like a slot on it. Yeah, so our, uh, our hang is broken into two parts because there's like two levels that we need to climb. And to get onto the first rung, we have these two sets of linear slides. And so they're passively sprung up, so they shoot up instantly using 
uh, this bungee cord here, so it's like it's like springy. Okay. Um, and then we use these servos, which double as a latch, right? But we use these um, servos, and they pull the robot up just just off the ground, so that we get like credit for being on the second bar. And to get from that to the level three, we have this, right? So that's what the magnet on our claw was for earlier, and it attaches to this hook that was originally at the bottom of our robot, and then lifts it all the way up. And uh, we're able to utilize the fact that our arm is really fast, and also uh, it pulls down with this motor right here, through like a lot of string routing, and it allows to, us to keep our arm really, really fast, uh, because we don't need to hang with it at all, right? Yeah, so these are just to keep it like, so it doesn't come out during a match. And then we have these two magnet pods over here on each side mm -hmm. that will magnetize to these. And then we also have um, a magnet down here that uh, like it magnetizes through the through the three print to this magnet over here. And then when we get it, when it's stored, it just clips in like that. That and is so cool. The intake gets it. Um, I think it's like, it's pretty unique and it's like pretty fun, but at the same time, it's also a lot of maintenance, like making sure the string doesn't get caught on anything. But um, I think it's something we could explore into and like optimize in the future. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, like I think there's like simpler ways to do it, but uh, we like it and like we have some like additions planned to make it a lot better. So we have a like a like a scissor linkage down here uh, for the sample pusher, and then we run it using um, this axon mini stored down here and then we just um yeah we have a slot back there for the other side and then using this mini we can we can just push the samples from underneath the sub and yeah it's been really effective for us and we've uh, we added it after our first qualifier after we noticed like it was slowing not being able to grab the samples near the edge was slowing us down a lot so we use a combination of pid control um, with inverse kinematics for the entire telescoping arm, so from the ground um, with the transformation matrix for each joint to get us um, the relationship between the end effector position and um, the joint angles. And with that, um, we combine that with Hermite splines. So moving this end effector position smoothly in this Cartesian coordinate frame um, to generate smooth paths, basically path planning for our end effector. Yeah, so it's very versatile. So we. We also have PID and motion profiling and other um, techniques. So um, we just use whichever technique is suitable for the situation. So like basket scoring, um, we use PID because it's very fast. Um, but for specimen, it's more precise. So we want to use the splines for those um, where we can control the movement better. Um, we have a camera on the side of our robot here. It's an Arducam uh, global shutter. Um, and it looks out for the April tags. And we use that in autonomous for relocalizing. So after our five plus one, when we cross the field, um, there's gonna be noise with the localization. So we wanna correct that with the April tag localization, as well as scanning for if our partner's in the way, the robot won't continue to score on the basket because we don't wanna crash the truck.